um, really good road win against a, a very good Seton Hall team. Um, and, and I mean, they're really good, but they always play us really tough. Just the, the matchup is, is tough because I, I think Kevin just got it. We played each other so much. We, he's got such a good feel for playing against us. Makes everything difficult. Took away our guards a lot. I thought they did a great job on Colin Gillespie. And because they did, I thought Jeremiah Robinson Earl and Jermaine Samuels stepping up was really important because they, they've got really good forwards in Obiago and, and Mamu and Samuel. They Those guys have length. They're really good defensively. And for Jeremiah and um, Jermaine to – be as effective as they were against them was, was really important in today's game. All right, we will go for questions. If anybody has any for coach, please just raise your hand or write in the chat and I will get to you. We will start off with Joe Giuliano. Uh, Jay, you mentioned the play of the bigs. Um, Jeremiah, how did you uh, try to manage his fouls in the second half? Did you think about putting him in sooner or did you feel like you had a good enough lead? And the fact that even after he came back, he had six points uh, to help you guys pull away. Yeah, I was thinking about putting him back in every time they scored, JoJo. Honestly, I, you know, I just look out of the corner of my eye, and um, because he's so, you know, he scored twenty three points, but he is so good defensively, and he's such a part. He's he's the centerpiece of our defense. It, you know, he can guard any position, but he also communicates out there. He's always talking. Um, so I, that's, that's what we really missed when he was out. So to answer your question, it was, um, <laughs> it, it was, I could have put him in at any time. Sure. And, uh, Jermaine, uh, he only had two points in the first half, only took two shots, I think. Um, what, uh, what gets him going and, and would you, were you okay with him not being as aggressive in the first half as in the second? Yeah. You know, he's, he's a veteran and he's really smart. And I think, I, I don't think he passed – I think he passed up one or two opportunities in the first half. We did talk about that. But, you know, you, know, you don't have to really get on him. Or much. You, you showed him a couple opportunities that he passed up, and then he gets it. And, he, and it's great having upperclassmen like that. And, and he really did step up in the second half. And, you know, he, he recognized some of the opportunities he had. Thank you. Terry, go ahead. Hey, Jay. You know, you were worried about your defense coming into this game, you know, after the last time you played them. And how critical was that stretch there early in the second half when you it was 9-9 and you forced three straight turnovers and went on an 8-0 run and, and kind of took control of the game? Yeah, I thought we I thought we really started to get it going defensively towards the end of the first half. And then uh, – um, and then the beginning of the second half, as you said, I was really psyched. And as I, Jeremiah is such a big part of that. And we had a we had a trap in front of our bench. And I thought we had the guy and they got out of it. And Jeremiah got his fourth foul on that play. And then our defense was okay. But, but you're right. That that period right there with our starters in there, we, we were we were really clicking defensively. You know, and you were talking about how they they kind of jammed up your guards. You know, Colin had 11 assists and just one turnover, career high 11 assists. I mean, he he was really patient with with what he was doing out there today. Exactly. They, you know, they, as I said, Kevin is a great coach, and and they played against us so much, um, <coughs> and they know what we do, and you know, they know taking Colin away is important, and they did a really good job. And if you're not a smart player and mature like Colin is, and you start forcing things, it that makes a difference in the game. But instead, he just got shots for everybody else and controlled the, the tempo of the game. They pressured him the whole game. We tried to keep him fresh, but I, I think we, we played him too many minutes again. We got we got to get better at that. Um, but he, he was outstanding. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Terry. Pat, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, you know, one thing that I was kind of uh, – a theme across the whole game was just the ball fakes and the use of the, the shot fake. What would you say about your team patience on offense overall? Yeah, but it was, we, you also saw that they blocked maybe what four of our three point attempts, you know, it, it, you know, we want our guys to be aggressive to shoot. And right away, early in the game, they blocked a couple, um, I blocked a couple threes when, you know, I think they're open. And we said to them, you just, we got to respect these guys' length and athleticism. 
I think they're the third tallest team in the country. And, and so we, we had to start shot faking them because we couldn't get shots off. And, um, and I think it, we, we, we took advantage of that in the second half. First half, not so good. Pat, go ahead. Hey, Jay, I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, hey, I'd rather talk about uh, a victory, but with the passing of, of John um, yesterday, just to you, what, what exactly did he mean to you in your coaching career? Well, I, I don't know if – I know nationally all the coaches in the country and, and basketball fans are, are mourning Coach Cheney's loss, but I don't know if anybody can really understand – the impact he has on the city of Philadelphia. You know, I put him up there with, I, I think he's as respected as Charlie Manuel, Dick Vermeil, um, you know, all the, all the great, co Fred Shiro, you can name anybody, um, you, you know, Doug, Doug Peterson. <laughs> he's that well respected in the city of Philadelphia. And uh, for me, as a young coach coming up, he was, he was the man, you know, he and Roland Massimino, were, um, you know, the, the top coaches in the country in, in my eyes at, the, at that time and really one of the greatest competitors. Um, what, what's amazing about him is he was as fierce a competitor as you've ever seen, the most I've ever seen. But off the court, he would call, he would call me during the Final Four runs and, and always have a kind word to say. And um, let you know he was following you. He's proud of you for Philadelphia. Um, a, a really kind, good man. David Melandra, go ahead. Hey, Jay, can you just talk about the last couple of years you and Seton Hall have had some very intense games the last couple of years. Can you say you guys are now the new rivalry of the Big East? It is a hell of a rivalry. I'll, I'll tell you that, David. And and it's because they're really good. You know, like I think someone asked me that before. I, I was, and I didn't have a great answer, but I, I just thought about it. I was just like, you know what? They said, why do you always have tough games with Seton Hall? Because they're really good. And and Kevin's a really good coach. And and we we know each other so well. Our teams, the players know each other. It's just, you know, it's one of those, it's just one of those rivalries with two really good teams that know each other well and, and love to compete against each other. And last one for me is you, with this Wednesday, you've now won nine in a row. What's it going to take to keep you guys in, in the rhythm that you're in right now to prevent from a, like a shocking loss? I, we're, I, I, I'll take it as a compliment that we're in a rhythm, but I, I don't feel like we're in a rhythm at all. I feel like we, we just, we're surviving in our, you know, in, in our minds, there's a lot of things we're doing that, um, you know, at, at the end of January, we would never be doing. Um, just making a lot of mistakes, but we're, we're gutting our way through it, which I'm really proud of these guys. So we feel like we have a lot of room for improvement and we're just trying to get better every day. We really are. All right. Thank you. Yep. Jeff, go ahead. Hey, Jay, uh, sorry for your loss again with uh, Coach Cheney. Um, Wanted to ask you, you know, kind of going back to your earlier answer, how much did you think about coach when you took the floor today? I know obviously you have a job to do and you're focused, but, but did he creep in your mind at all as you were out there and even taking the floor? You know, I could, I could say this, I spent the morning between pregame meal and, um, and, and before we left for the game, just reading articles, you know, and, and all you guys, if you're on here, I can't see everybody wrote some great article. I just, you know, it was, it was very emotional, you know, and uh, our coaching staff talked about him because I got young coaches on, on our staff that you know, might not have played against him or, or, or been recruited by him. So we, we told stories about him and, and just wanted those guys to understand like just what a great competitor he was. And, and but off the, he looked fierce. It's funny, all of you writers, almost everybody wrote, He's the only guy that intimidated me, which was, it was pretty consistent. It was, um, but I, I, that's what I did. I spent, I spent my morning reading articles about him and, 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 and really just reminiscing about what a great man and, uh, and person he was. And is there any part of your coaching style at all? I know, you know, you hear successful coaches in any sport take a little from this coach or this coach growing up, 
watching, seeing Chaney and be as successful as he was. Is there any part of your coaching style that you're like, I, I really like that John did it this way? Um, is there anything like that? Yeah, there really is. There, there's, uh, I grew up as a player admiring him and his teams. And then as a coach, as a young coach, you know, he was the best in the country at the time. And I, I watched a lot and, and I spent a lot of time with Jimmy Maloney talking about Temple basketball. So I, uh, I, I, we use a lot of things that Coach Chaney instilled in his program. I just don't want to tell anybody what they are. It's not yelling at your guys and no six o'clock in the morning practices. I know that. No, we do that. We do. Oh, okay. not, we just don't do it every day. Okay. But we do a lot of six o'clock in the morning practices. We oh, really okay. Do, All right. We really do. And, and I definitely got that from him. Oh, nice. All right. Thanks, Coach. Again, sorry for your loss. Thanks, Jeff. Austin, go ahead. Hey, Jay, uh, getting back to the game here, you guys, I know you guys got the win and, and you're used to having a short bench, but you guys only got six points off the bench. Is that a cause for concern or would you like to see a little more going forward? Uh, Austin, I, I really think to, to uh, what I was trying to address earlier, I, I think it's a great potential for us. I think Eric Dixon can get a lot better. I think Cole Swider can get a lot more minutes. I think Brandon Slater can get a lot better. You know, like this was their year where they were starting to play and Eric Dixon was starting to understand what we were doing. And then we got shut down. And when you get shut down, it affects those younger guys. It affects the guys off the bench more than the, the starters know what they're doing. They've been playing for some years, the veterans. I, I think our, our bench, you know, if we get, and we get Brian Antoine healthy and in it, I don't know how much he can really help this year, but he can add some depth. So, um, I think we got great potential there. I'm not concerned. All right. Thanks, Jay. Got it. Delaney, go ahead. Hi, Coach. I just had a quick question for you about how you overcome the size disadvantage that you face most nights. Yeah, you know, we, we try to do it with, um, with kind of quickness and, and speed, Delaney, and, and, and skill. You know, we, we realize it is a disadvantage and, and – um, we try. I said I, they were some of the areas that we didn't do a great job of tonight. You know, as you saw early in the game, a couple of the, the pick and roll situations where they they just hit the roll man, and scored over our our lack of size. We we we've got to be better in a, in our uh, ball screen coverage, but that's that's how we try to do it. Yeah. Thank you. You got it. Alex, go ahead. Hi, Jay. Um, you guys really didn't give up any kind of big runs today it felt like can you just speak to the guys keeping the energy up not losing their focus or anything like that yeah you know it's a good point Alex I, I think we did I think generally we did a pretty good job of that I did I, um we we might have called a timeout once when they when they went on a little run I think in the in the second half but I, I do think you know it was to um I think Joe's question earlier was you know, we think about putting Jeremiah Robinson Earl in like they every time they'd make, you know, two baskets without him in there. And I'd say, all right, I'm going to put him in and then we'd score, you know, and then they'd score, you know, then they get a bucket. And I'm thinking about putting him in and we'd score again and kept the, the distance. And I, I thought that was a pretty good job of us offensively. Thank you. Matt, go ahead. Hey, Jay. Um, I did want to ask you one more question about John. Um, basically, your perspective as a coach and as a human being, when you started in the profession, you were an assistant in the 80s in Philadelphia, then you eventually get the Villanova job. And your progression, I mean, through that time, Temple essentially made the NCAA tournament every single year. And then by the time you get the Villanova job, it is the winter of his career at Temple. And how you changed and how Cheney being the face of college basketball in that city was a thing for about 20 years. And clearly, you know, that title has been bequeathed upon you by virtue of Villanova's success and how those things kind of all have informed your, uh, your love and knowledge of the man and, uh, and how you've grown since. Yeah, it's interesting, Matt. He was, uh, he was larger than life when I was a player and, and an assistant coach at Villanova. And I was an assistant on the team, the, the Villanova team in 87, eight, there was, number 18 in the country and at temple was number one in the country. It was the biggest thing in the city. It was a huge game. I would have to say as an assistant coach, I was intimidated and in awe of him. 
And when I came back as a head coach and he was still the head coach at Temple, I was still intimidated and in awe of him. And uh, we had some, we had some <laughs> battles when I first got here that weren't, weren't pretty, but off the court, you know, we'd have our big five dinners with the big five coaches and, um, and our wives. And, you know, we'd leave there with my wife saying, my wife, Patty would say like, Oh, he's so sweet. I love John. He's, and I've, I'm thinking, I don't know. I don't know. I, he was sweet tonight, but when you compete with a man, he, but he really, he, he, but he would forget, he would, he would forget the competition and in, in the off season, anywhere he'd see you, he, he, he was very kind. And as I said, anytime he made an NCAA run, he always called me and, and, um, and was, was always really supportive. And, and um, you could tell he was proud of Villanova represent Philadelphia basketball. He took great pride in Philadelphia basketball. I learned that from him. And, um, you know, even, you know, after he retired, he, you know, he would call, um, you know, if we had a, a good run and um, he, I, I wish I had a better vocabulary to describe how big he is and respect that he is in Philadelphia. And I guess having a four hour TV show on Christmas Eve night that everybody watched. I don't, I've never heard of any other sports figure that did that. And, and everyone loved it. I watched it. You know, he, he's an incredible guy. Uh, just out of curiosity, do you remember the last time you actually got to see him in person, obviously with the pandemic? Uh, most definitely wasn't recently. Uh, no. Okay. I don't know if it had been a while since you'd been able, actually able to, to meet up with him. In person, uh, I think it was at a Coaches versus Cancer event. And it might have been two or three years ago. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Jay. You got it. Tom, um, go ahead. Hey, Jay. I'm sorry if this question's already been asked, but I mean, you've had so many close games with Seton Hall. What's it like being in one that's not so close? Are you kind of sitting there going, the run's coming, don't take your foot off the pedal or what? Definitely, Tom. I, I like I, I didn't think of this one as not being one of the close ones because I, I I know how good they are and I know they can always make a run at us. Um, so the history of this rivalry is such that you just, you never ever feel comfortable, you know, and uh, I definitely felt that way tonight. Thank you. You got it. Ben, go ahead. Hey, Jay. Um... You know, today, Justin Moore really had a ton of success, probably his best game from beyond the arc, uh, especially early on in the game. How important was he in, in the team's success today? You know, it was really big, um, and I'm glad I got to mention that. Um, he's, he had a really bad uh, sprained thumb for a while, and it really affected his shooting. It wasn't something we wanted to talk about. We didn't want anybody to know it. Um, but just yesterday, after practice, Mike Nardi or, or um, George Halkovich, our assistants, shot with him, and they came to me and said, "Like, hey, he, this was, this was the first time he was, he was actually looking good shooting the ball." So, in the back of my mind, I was hoping today, but I think that's what we saw. I think we saw him healthy, and and um, and it, it was really important for us, especially in the first half. Thank you. All right, thank you, Coach. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, guys. Hey, Jeremiah. Um, what was like? What was it like to be in the flow uh, so early in the game, and and how disappointing was it to have to leave the game after picking up your fourth foul? Um, I mean, we just we practice every day, so I mean, on any given night, it can be anybody. Just so up, and I could get it going a little bit earlier in the game, and it just is all with the team, with our teammates. That's how. Our teammates get us those shots and the, the great plays. And so I just give the credit to the teammates. And then it wasn't disappointing going out. Obviously, I want to be out there and play, but I can still be out there and just out on the sideline, talking to the talking to the players, keeping them in the game, bringing some energy, and just keeping the team going. And after uh, sitting for 14 minutes on the bench, you came back, scored six points, played some good defense. Um, um, what was it like to like keep your mind in the game and come out and contribute at the end? Just having a great attitude. We sometimes you can't control everything going on in the game, so just keeping a great attitude and a great mindset. So just always being prepared for situations such as sitting out for 14 minutes and then just being able to go back in right away and just be effective as possible. Great, thank you. Terry, go ahead. 
Hey, Jeremiah. Did you get a kind of a sense early that, that their defense was focusing on your guards and that yourself and Jermaine, the bigs, would have to have a bigger impact? Um, I wouldn't say we went into it knowing that the fours might have to have a more impact in the guards because the guards played really well last game. We just go in and just we practice our habits and just the, our offense. So we just go in. However, they play defense. We're just we're prepared for the most difficult situations, and it just so happened the fours got it going a little bit, and then obviously, and then you saw Justin and Colin and all the guards be able to get it going a little bit. So I think we just we just play off each other and we just make good decisions for, uh, throughout the game. Thank you, Austin. Go ahead. Hey, Jeremiah. Um, the last two games after the restart were kind of tough shooting games for you, but tonight you kind of got returned to form there. What was working for you shooting the ball today? I would say just staying confident. I feel like the last two games, they were all good shots. It just happened to not go in, but just keeping uh, high confidence and shooting the ball and just having a great attitude throughout those two games and going into this one. All right, appreciate it. Delaney, go ahead. Uh, yeah, going along with that, you're obviously great offensively, scoring 23 points today. But recently, you can tell the work you put in defensively. Defensively, What's it like defending players with such a big size advantage on you? And then do you take pride in being a threat on both ends of the court? Yeah, of course. I take a lot of pride in defense. I remember growing up, my, my coaches uh, were always heavy on rebounding and defense, defense and rebounding. And so I feel like just having that mindset growing up makes it just easier just to take pride in the little things, especially in not scoring. So just defense and rebounding and just playing with your teammates and then just always just having a great attitude. Thank you. Danny, go ahead. Hey, uh, Jeremiah, um, there's only a handful of teams right now in Division One that can say they've been on a nine game winning streak at any point going through the, the pandemic and all the challenges that uh, schools are facing and adding on the fact that you guys have a bullseye in your back for what's expected. Can you just put into words um, just what it means right now at this point in the season to be able to put together nine wins in a row, what it, what it actually means for the team? I would say we just, we just focus on becoming the best team we possibly can every day through practice, watching film, every game we go into. So just keeping, keeping that mindset of just becoming the best team we possibly can be because we can still, we, we know we can get better. So that, I think that drives us every day going into practices, knowing that we can still become a better team, even though we've had some success, but we really haven't proven anything as a, as a group so far. Does anybody else have any questions for Jeremiah? If so, just unmute yourself. All right, that looks like all, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey, Jermaine, um, first half, uh, you look like you were just more, um, you know, playing with the team, supporting the other guys. I think you only took two shots, but in the second half, you became uh, more aggressive. Did you feel at halftime that that was uh, needed for you to be more aggressive? Um, coming into the next half, I was just worried about just trying to make the right play for my teammates and uh, just being aggressive. Um, Coach put me in opportunities to, to, to make plays. My teammates uh, got me opportunities to, to make plays, and um, I just took advantage of the, of the opportunities. And for Jeremiah to sit as long as he did with the foul trouble, I mean, what was the importance of you defensively to uh, kind of keep their bigs under control? Um, it was just to, you know, stick together. Um, we, we work on that every day um, we, we're, we're, where we have different lineups. And uh, we, we trust in everybody coming off the bench. And it was just about um, the next stop and, um, you know, focusing on maintaining the Villanova basketball. Thank you. Austin, go ahead. Uh, hey, Jermaine. So you guys, I think most people know, aren't really the tallest group and Seton Hall has a bunch of tall forwards. What, for, as a forward, what was kind of, how do you contain those guys given the size dis disadvantage? Um, you just try to uh, be, be as physical as possible and also rely on your teammates behind you. It isn't just a one man job. Uh, we played together as a team and um, our teammates always have our back. So um, they are tall, they are physical, but we have help behind us. All right, thank you, Jeremiah. Terry, go ahead. You know, Jeremiah, you guys have been back for, you know, 10 days or so now, whatever it is. If you feel like you're, 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 you're kind of getting your legs underneath you, you know, after all those starts and stoppages? Uh, definitely. Um, of course, it's one day at a time. It's one game at a time. 
Um, we have to continue to, be, to get better. And again, our main focus is to be the best Villanova basketball team by the end of the year. And that's our only goal, no matter uh, what, what happens and what goes on around us. You know, before this game the other day, Coach said that the defense had to step up in this one. There was that stretch there early in the uh, the first half where you forced three straight turnovers and went on an, an 8-0 run. How critical was that stretch for you guys? Uh, any stop we can get is uh, very critical for us, especially ones like that where we can put them together. Um, it's a step in the right direction, but we got to get better and not continue to improve on the defensive end. Thank you. Tom, go ahead. Hey, Jermaine, you guys have had so many close games with Seton Hall. Did this one feel a little weird because it wasn't? Uh, not necessarily did feel weird without the crowd on, on, on top of us, with it being so close for, for a good uh, portion of the game. But uh, um, it, at the end of the day, it, it, was, a, it was a good win. And, um, you know, Seton Hall is a good team. Those people are so nice to you. <laughs> Yeah, they are. <laughs> Delaney, go ahead. Hi, when your team um, was in a little trouble in the second half, it seemed you took it upon yourself to step up and almost carry the team. In your se senior season, um, do you feel you're taking on more of a leadership role? Uh, I definitely do, but uh, it has nothing to do with scoring and everything to do with maintaining and playing Villanova basketball for my teammates and coaches. Um, that's the number one priority. Um, the rest will come, but at the end of the day, it's about it's about maintaining going over basketball. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else have a question? If so, just unmute yourself. Danny, go ahead. Hey, Tremaine, um, your ability to um, learn from that first game uh, against Seton Hall and then turn around in the span of two weeks. There's a lot of that going on in different conferences. The way that the schedule set up, some playing back to backs, obviously. Um, but how important is it for this team to be able to, to, to learn from game to game and be able to apply that and show the success you had today in areas that you struggled with just two weeks ago against this, uh, against this team? Uh, it's very important. Um, again, coming out, of, coming out of quarantine wasn't easy. Um, we battled and, and we came out with a W. And um, for the next games, it was all about building our habits, building those defensive habits most importantly. And... Um, Every time we get a chance to step on the floor and get better for the future, it's everything. And um, that leads to the next game and, and the next game after that. And um, that's, that's the path we're going to go down.